Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a haptic equation. We've done a similar problem before, and the reason why I want to do this video is because there was a mistake in that video which you pointed out. Thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to do a similar problem, hopefully this time correctly. Anyways, we have 13 times x to the 6th power minus 8 times x to the 7th power equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x. First of all, I just want to pose a question, do 13 and 8 ring a bell? If it does, it's good. We're in good shape. Let's go ahead and consider the following sequence. 1, 1. So we start with two ones, and then to get the next term, we add the last two terms. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 plus 13 is 21. You get the idea? And this is what? Good old Fibonacci sequence. You probably know the you know story about the rabbits, so on and so forth. You can go ahead and look it up if you don't. But what does this have to do with our problem, right? Well, here's the thing. If you remember the generating function for the Fibonacci sequence, you can realize that there is a quadratic equation involved in that formula. And also, if you think about the formula for the nth Fibonacci number, you're also going to notice something that I'm going to talk about. So, here's the thing. If you consider the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0, which is very special, the roots are going to be x equals 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Are those numbers familiar? Yes, they do appear in the formula for the nth Fibonacci number. Remember that? Okay. There's probably something uh, in the front, and then we raise the 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the nth power. The interesting part is that even though we're kind of raising radicals to powers, uh, we always get integers answers. Okay? So we have the following equation. So what? We're going to go ahead and start with this quadratic and isolate x squared because it's the highest power. Great. So this allows me to write the quadratic term in terms of the linear term. In other words, we were able to linearize this. Remember, that's a strategy that we use often with polynomials. If you're trying to find the remainder, sometimes it's hard to replace x to the power 33 with something, but you can just build your way to it. So if x squared is equal to x plus 1, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate x cubed in terms of x and that can be done by just multiplying x squared by x. Now think about it, x cubed is x squared times x, x to the fourth is x cubed times x. So every time I'm going to multiply by x. When you multiply this expression by x you get x squared plus x but you got to remember x squared can always be replaced with x plus one. That's our magic formula or magical formula. And this is going to give us 2x plus 1. Now pay attention to that, and we're going to write a couple more terms. x to the fourth, obviously, is obtained by multiplying x cubed, of course, in the linear form, by x. If you multiply 2x plus 1 by x, in other words, I'm talking about distributing the x over, you get 2x squared plus x. And then, of course, again, we can replace x squared with x plus 1, and that gives us 2 times x plus 1, which is 2x plus 2 plus x, 3x plus 2. If I do the same thing with x to the fifth, I get 3x squared plus 2x, which turns into 5x plus 3. If I do it with x to the sixth power, I get 5x squared plus 3x. Notice that every time we take the previous term, multiply by x, and then simplify by using the formula for x squared, which this time gives us 8x plus 5. Have you noticed a pattern? And I'm going to write the x to the 7th and stop. 8x squared plus 5x. And then again, replacing 8 with x plus 1. I mean, x squared with x plus 1. We're going to get 13x plus 8. Now, I want you to notice something. Actually, a couple things. First of all, the coefficient of x becomes the constant in the next term. Right? And then here the coefficient of 3 becomes the constant, so on and so forth. So it kind of goes like zigzag, right? Like 3 goes here, 5 goes here, 8 goes here. Make sense? 
great and two goes here so you can kind of get a pattern and continue doing this but notice that what is most important thing here is that the coefficients are terms of the Fibonacci sequence take a look two three starting with one of course and if you go before that it's x plus one and the same thing the same rule applies because we start with one and then one goes to one make sense so the whole thing is is going to give you the terms which is if you just focus on one of the columns like let's go ahead and look at this column one one two three five eight those are the terms of the fibonacci sequence but guess what we're going to apply it to our equation what's the equation it is 13 x to the 6 minus 8 x to the 7th equals 1 and how do we apply it though right well here's the thing suppose you don't know what the answer is and now we do have something for x to the 6th and x to the 7th let's go ahead and replace x to the 6th with 8x plus 5 and x to the 7th with 13x plus 8 and then evaluate this expression now we want this to be and by the way my equation says this is supposed to equal 1 so let's go ahead and set it equal to 1 but 13 times 8 is 104 this is 104 x plus 65 minus 104 x uh oh minus 64 equals 1 104 x cancels out leaving us with no x and we get 1 equals 1 of course this is always true what does that mean it means that whatever made x squared equal to x plus 1 also makes this equation true in other words in other words solutions of x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0 are also solutions of 13x to the 6 minus 8x to the 7th minus 1 equals 0. I just wrote it as a heptic. Obviously, I didn't write it in standard form because I just wanted to start with a positive term. It doesn't matter. No big deal. You can switch them out. So, x values are given by 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. So, these two are the roots of this heptic, septic, whatever you want to call that equation. The 7th degree, right? But wait a minute. Are they the only solutions? Aren't there any other solutions? Of course, there are more solutions because this is heptic and heptic equations are supposed to have seven solutions, right? Let's go ahead and check them out. I believe I have them for you. First of all, a graph of this function. Obviously, there's a cutoff. You don't see that part. But notice that it intersects the horizontal line y equals 1 at three points. But we only got two solutions, 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. The other one is kind of weird. You can't find it by algebraic methods. Now, there was a question, uh, a method, uh, actually not a question. By the way, these are the complex solutions, so they make a total of seven solutions. So four of them are complex. There was a question about whether there is an algebraic method to solve this problem. Not that I know of. There's probably a different way. Please let me know if you do know how to solve this problem algebraically without using the Fibonacci sequence, without using, without using this type of polynomial. But we got the solutions and here we are. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.